Hello, future friends. Thank you for tuning into our show. We are Mistakes Being Made, a live play Dungeons & Dragons show from Portland, Oregon. If you're new to the show and would like to catch up, uh, all of our sessions are posted in on Twitch and on YouTube. Um, you can find links to all of our social media in the comment section of our show um, and also in the uh, more section of the YouTube postings. Uh, if you uh, want to follow us on social media, uh, our Twitter account is probably the easiest way to find all of our social media accounts. Um, it is MBM RPG, and our pinned tweet has all the social media. Um, Additionally, we'd like to thank the following people for their assistance in helping our make, make our show better. Uh, thanks to Axe and Shield for their awesome combat risers. Thanks to Dwarven Forge for their amazing terrain. Thanks to Sirenscape for their fantastic soundscapes. And thanks to uh, Satine Phoenix and Rudy Rutenberg for all of their advice and help along the way. Uh, with that, let's meet the players and their characters. Mike, who are you playing tonight? I am playing Cirque, the half orc barbarian. Uh, currently, trying to win the brawl for it all. Yeah. And Eric, who are you playing? Uh, I am uh, Foxfire. Uh, he is a elvish rogue that is uh, currently sneaking through the crowd. Yeah. yeah. And Eric? Well, I'll tell you what I'm not playing. What I'm not playing is Visago Free, ever trustworthy bard, because he's a wanted man. What I am playing <laughs> is a uh, just a simple peculiar of fighters and necessities. Uh, his name is Vazado. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember what name you used last week? I don't. I don't. I, I don't know if I actually gave a name last if week. Only our our episodes were recorded. Right, so I know, right. I don't think I actually gave. I gave Cirque the mysterious stranger. Yeah, the mysterious stranger, which is a, a shout out from nowhere, from, from parts unknown. Parts from unknown. parts unknown. Okay. He comes with no past and no name. Okay, so that leads us right into um, a recap of last week. So last week, the tempest, uh, tempest, tempest, temptress. Uh, attempted or put down an attempted mutiny um, and returned to Emmerich's hold. Uh, for those fans of uh, Mr. Remington, I'm sure he had tons of fans. <coughs> um, he is no more. Uh, not only did he get keel hauled three times, but the last time they cut the ropes and he just drowned. So they made um, some chunks. They returned to Emmerich's hold to repair their ship. Uh, their ship is being repaired currently. Um, Along with uh, that, they found out that upon returning, um, they found it a little bit different than uh, Vaziago and uh, Craig of Clan Rubble Tide left it. Uh, the Yuanti Den, the Sleeping Serpent, has been burned down. Uh, the machine shop owned by their gnomish ally, Nikas Geerguts, um, has been uh, ransacked. Uh, the PCs found out that uh, Volgrim the Mighty is looking for Vizago, hence the disguise, and the others who orchestrated the raid on his estate. Um, and they also found out that the uh, Fairwind is having a fighting tournament to, name, uh, to crown a new champion called the Brawl for It All, um, of which uh, Cirque immediately jumped in, uh, jumped into entering. Um, so, uh, couple of other things because I don't know that everybody remembers everything that's going on. So um, the Red Wizards are looking for the crew of the Tempest Temptress. Um, the Black, Black Network, otherwise known as the Centaurum, are, have a quest to go search the, uh, or help clear out their old keep, Sentinel Keep. Um, and uh, Xenos and Sarsarel um, went to speak with um, uh, Seasage Lawn Jogger, um, who was researching um, a creature by the no uh, name of the Ember Flame, uh, which you know, upon returning to uh, Emmerich's Hold, there has been more sightings of his goblinoid legion. So. So with that, we're going to pick off right where we left off with Cirque um, able to handily put down um, the last of the uh, fighters in this round of the tournament. 
Peter um, Scruff 77 said, yeah, you gave no name. You just had bad facial hair. Yep. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and a man button, I believe. I gave myself oh, a man button as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the man button. So, yeah. um, so Sir, uh, you, beat, you beat down the last of them. I apologize. I don't have it in front of me who, who, who you fought last. The monk. Uh, the monk, but, oh, yeah, it was Farva. <laughs> Um, and he was of the Red Cloaks, which was uh, the the City Watch. Yes, that's right. Um, I got to beat up a cop. Yeah. Yep. yep. And now so, I'm gonna go buy him a liter of beer. Yeah, a liter of beer. Um, he he appreciates a liter liter of beer. Um, and uh, Mean Sting Jokerlin uh, rows you back to the the Fair Wind. And uh, what do you guys do? I want to look into my the next competitors. Okay. And see <coughs> who else looks like it could be a challenge or who is next for me. Okay. Um, so, uh, all right. Do you want to do that yourself or do you want to have. I, I might ask or someone some who, <laughs> who might be adept in social situations to yeah, do that. Um, only, if hey, only manager. There. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know who I'm fighting next. Oh well, that's easy. Uh, so I'll start. I'll start going around okay. tables, and I'm going to disguise it as a promotional material where I'm going around. Who next? Who next can fight the mysterious train? <laughs> um, okay. Well, the the domish bartender. Mm -hmm. um, he's like, well, here's the leaderboard, and it's got the tournament brackets on it. Yeah. Um, and you see that tomorrow, um, he uh, Cirque. The mysterious stranger, not mm -hmm. Sir, sorry. Yeah. Um, is I don't know who that guy is. Set to fight. Uh, let, me, let me flip back to. Um, he is set to fight uh, Stone Cold uh, Bulges Brewforge. Uh, a dwarven fighter of some renown. Hmm. <laughs> Did I break your ear? I'm sorry, I lost a little bit. But it's mostly because I just had an image of him on one of the posts of the ring with like two giant mugs real going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He does that. Yeah. Why wouldn't he do that? Yeah, stone watch, cold. watch out for the stoner. So that is the next up in, in the bracket. Um, you see also that um, the Minotaur that uh, Foxfire saw the other day, yeah. um, Fisthorn, mm -hmm. is is still doing still just doing fine sure. in his, his side of the bracket. How many more yeah. wins do I have to get <coughs> to be at the, the finals? So you fought three, yep. and then it's two, and then it's the... Oh, okay. Yeah. So today is two fights. Yeah. Okay. And then the final night of the tournament would be you versus... All right. Uh, I mean, it would be you versus the other opponent, whoever wins whoever his side wins. of the bracket. Yeah, I mean, it's not. It's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed be. that you're gonna fight a minotaur. That's true. Like, why? How? That's not how sports works. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I mean, we, we well, of course, Cirque we could. Uh, still image of that or not, Cirque, the mysterious stranger could yeah. somehow. Oh yeah, not that's true. You could win lose. his way. No, oh, that's yeah. true. Lose. I so, could lose actually. Um, um, so I'm gonna go while. We're all like everybody's having fun here. I'm gonna go look for um, somebody who sells potions. Okay. Okay. And I'm gonna go see if I can find a potion of giants, giant growth. Okay. So. Because so, I want to. So there are a couple of different types of potions. There's uh, enlarge, reduce, um, and then there is giant strength, I believe. The potion of growth. Potion of growth. That's okay. the the enlarge. Okay. Enlarge effect of enlarge reduce. Okay. So um, it is night, so doing this at nighttime is probably going to be more difficult than waiting until the. That's you, true. There is a, there is a potion shop um, in in Emmerich's Hold uh, that you believe you could probably find what you're looking for there. Okay. So yeah, I'll go there. I guess tomorrow. Okay. So, Tonight we drink. Yeah. So you guys drink. Are you oh, gonna 100%. meet back up at? Where are you guys staying, by the way? Oh yeah, because the boat's kind of in dock. Yeah. Yeah, the boat is <laughs> definitely not um, not open for for you guys to say. Now there is a um, there is a 
a boarding uh, like, house yeah. in town uh, it's near the docks um, called Gygax's Gilded Halls um, they are run by a, no, a gnome a white haired gnome named uh, Gygax who um, ha claims to have lodging to fit every need um, there may or may not be secret doors in the pit traps though so be careful <laughs> uh, um, what, what, what place did uh, Vizago stay last time he was here? Was it the? Uh, I believe it was Gaius's yeah. yeah, Gilded Halls. Yeah. Does the Fairwind offer rooms? Yeah. Yeah. They have a couple rooms. What's there. what's the what's the price in said rooms? Um, well, they're nicer rooms because um, because it's a pirate cap, a yeah. pirate lord's uh, yeah. tavern. Um, so it is two gold a night. I'm gonna stay there, uh, not for any particular reason. Oh, Definitely you don't wanna, not you don't going stay back to any Hall. place. I'm just gonna stay here. Okay. I can get more work done here. So mm -hmm. it is a suite. Um, <coughs> so there is a, a bedroom area, um, a living space, and also a private bath. Oh, fantastic! So that's that's good. Is anybody else staying with Zago or? I mean, of course someone can stay with Zago. I wouldn't forget my friends. Craig's there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's fair. So there's two, there's two rooms if you guys want to take the other. Yeah, we'll take the other. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. We get the whole floor. Yeah. There, is a, there is a door yeah. that both people, if both parties unlock it, you can go from room to room. Oh, well, that's Only nice. If both parties unlock it, you say, can you unlock the door? <laughs> I can. <laughs> But it's good that it's good that they took it because <laughs> yeah. otherwise you just have a little kid that opens up his side and knocks it's on, on your the door yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah. but uh, uh, Craig just casts alarm over that door. <laughs> I know that's fine. That's I'll, fair. I'll open the door when yeah. you're sleeping. Yeah, and then I'll leave the room. Good. So <laughs> as you guys um, kind of adjourn for the evening. Um, yep. Let me flip back to my notes about this session, not about the locations that the works hold. Um, as you guys adjourn for the evening, um, Xenos and uh, and Sarsra will find you. Um, and they kind of are ready to talk to you about kind of what their experiences of the day were. Um, they said that they spent most of the day trying to keep uh, CCH Lawn Jogger on task, explaining to them what he's learned. Uh, he gets very easily distracted. Mm. Uh, he's he's an elderly man, so he might have a touch of uh, uh, the beginning stages of dementia. Um, but what what they've heard is that um, the Ember Flame is a name for uh, a massive red dragon, um, also known as uh, Rosun. Uh, Rosun uh, terrorized the region approximately a thousand years ago and was known to devour other dragons' eggs uh, because he believed that they would increase his power. Um, the Sea Sage tells them that um, it is rumored that a blue dragon struck a deal with an archdevil um, to keep her brood safe from Rasun's wrath, um, and shortly thereafter, Rasun was not seen for ages. Um, and Lon Yager believes the cult of the dragon wished to um, use the recently reemerged Rosun uh, towards their own goals, um, and the Legion of Ember Flame follow uh, Rosun's banner as if he were a living god. So I don't believe that you guys knew that the cult of the dragon and the Legion of the Ember Flame before were two different organizations. Yeah, but they are two different organizations. Hmm. One is a group of exclusively goblinoids. The other is um, a, <coughs> a cult of humanoid races. Hmm. All right. How did the uh, how's the sea sage holding up? Um, well, he's very distressed um, by the fact that Rosun, uh, who appears to be the massive red dragon yeah. who smote the island, uh, is awake and aware, and so he is trying to figure out how best to reenact the deal with the um, Archdevil of some sort. Not necessarily the same deal, but like, what does he have to do to get Rosun back to sleep? Because obviously it happened once. Yeah. Um, 
with that, um, Eric, why don't you make a perception check for me? Fourteen. Okay. So the way you guys are positioned, um, Foxfire is just at the right angle to notice um, someone outside the window. And this is the second story of uh, the fair, uh, the fair one. Actually, it's the third story because um, the second story is more um, tavern space. So um, you notice somebody right outside the window. Okay. What do you do? I'm gonna try to sneak over there and grab him. Okay. Or do you tell Stroke about it? <laughs> <clears throat> because I'm pretty sure we'd be on the first floor real quick. <laughs> uh, be 18 for stealth. Okay. So. How, explain to me, so you guys are in so kind I'm, of a suite room kind of just where, a, with couches and stuff where you're kind of sitting and you've got the angle on it. How are you going to stealth your way over to the window? It's pretty open, but how, you, how are you going to do it? Um, well, just kind of, been, I've been leaning back against the wall kind of while this conversation is going on. That's how I was able to catch okay. view out the window and just as casually as I can just kind of keep edging into the shadows of the room okay. to get around to the window okay. and make the grab. You said an 18? Yeah. All right, let me see. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're totally successful in edging towards the room. So when you get to the window, um, you notice that there, uh, the figure has not moved. So what do you do? It, the window is closed. Window is closed. Oh, okay. Well, that just, we can't just smash through the window and grab him. You could. I mean, yes, you can. I'm you gonna absolutely can. Gonna I'm going to smash through the window and grab him. Okay. So I'm not going to make you make uh, an attack against the window. Okay. Uh, so you, like the pommel of a dagger yep. or um, your sword smashes right through the window, broken glass everywhere. Um, it's my room. Stone Cold <laughs> rushes to... The uh, <laughs> rushes to the ring because yeah. that's like that's what, yeah that's what he does. <laughs> that's what he does <laughs> music early, brother. Um, and um, when like, you uh, why don't you make a a grapple check that is an, an <laughs> attack roll? I, I get your deposit back. God damn! No, this is your room, not mine. Ah. Attack roll with uh, it's just gonna be your attack roll. Okay. With plus your, you know, plus your modifier. Star Spell doesn't my. get to leave this room until he casts yeah, Mending so in my window. Your dex no. plus dex your plus. <laughs> so, plus the proficiency. Oh, you're not proficient. No, never mind. Not in that. Uh, so, 16. 16. So, you sweep uh, to grab the figure. It, your hand sweeps right through it, and you see someone, like, speedily, not uh, because it's a, it is a fairly pitched roof. Um, Mo making their way away, like they had created an illusion while oh. we were moving there. So, um, why don't we go ahead and roll initiative at this point? Because Chase. Um, so, Aaron, what'd you get? Well, with my plus four, five. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You're still going. Eric, my you Eighteen. No. Eighteen. Okay. Um, it's very comfy. Mike, 21. 21, okay. And my feet So, <laughs> Mike, what Cirque sees is he sees Foxfire make his way around the room, uh, kind of sneakily. Yeah. Um, you can <laughs> casually observe him because... Yeah, I'm in the room with him. You're in He's, the room. He does that all the time. So. Um, <laughs> and then he breaks sneaky. a window, and then you notice that there is someone... Uh, or he tried to grab someone, but it, it appears to be an illusion. So what do you, what does Cirque do? Run and jump <laughs> out the window. Okay. How many times did you rage Twice. yesterday? How many times do you get to rage? Three times. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure you had rages left. Okay. Oh, yeah. I got one left. So you can jump through the window. Yep. That's fine. Um, you see about 30 feet off. There okay. is a person making their way to um, the edge of a uh, slightly peaked roof. Um, and you know that this is going to be tough to run on. So somehow they used their movement in such a way that they were able to counteract that. Um, I don't or they're dexterous. Or they're dexterous. Um, so what are you going to do? 
You gonna run toward him? Um, well, they're running along the roof, right? Yeah, it looks like they're getting ready to jump down, but they haven't done that yet. Well, can I just slide down the roof to the ground and then run after them? Yeah. That's, I think, my the safest bet for me to do. Okay. Because <laughs> um, otherwise I'm just, I'm going to land on the ground so sooner. So, why don't you make an <laughs> athletics check for me? All right. Natural 31. Okay. So, you land with cat leg grace, and um, you are on the ground. Um, in fact, um, with your natural 20, um, you're able to kind of grab some handholds along the way so that you don't take damage. Oh, cool. Because we are 20 feet in the air, so oh, 10 yeah, feet for that. free. Um, so you're on the ground, and are you going to hold um, your action to dash? Because you can hold part of your turn, or you could move the 30 feet if you wanted to. It's just kind of up to you. Yeah, I'm just going to move as fast move as I can. Where to you, okay. Yeah. So you dash the rest of the way, and you're basically under where it, it appears that she, uh, <coughs> this figure. She. Not she. she. No, ah. no, just this figure. You called it. Just a humanoid <laughs> figure. You let it slip. Um, is about to jump down. So, um, and so to paint the picture, um, the fair wind, you're probably on this side of the fair wind since it's yeah. overlooking the bay. Um, uh, Fairwind has uh, wide-ish streets, probably 20 feet wide, so that you could fit a cart down it pretty easily. Um, and then there is other buildings on the other side. She is standing at a corner, um, and there is um, a building that she could possibly jump to that's probably 15 feet away. Um, and then buildings on the other side of the street that are 20 feet away. Um, okay. Yeah. So... Um, Foxfire, what are you doing? Is the, they're still on the roof? Uh, they have not acted yet, so they're exactly where they were standing before. Which was like 30 feet away. From 30 feet away from you. So, um, after I smash the glass, I step outside and knock an arrow to my short bow real quick. Say a quick little, uh, a little word to, uh, my friend, uh, Solonor Thalandria, the god of the woods, okay. uh, and archery. And a natural 27 with a short bow to just uh, to try to basically Ooh. try to um, uh, hamstring him to drop him. Okay, so you're going to try to do like a trip? No, I'm going to try to hit him with the arrow oh, and basically okay. hamstring him. Okay. Okay, so make, to, uh, uh, make them hurt. Roll your damage. It okay. is not a sneak attack. Right. Uh, but that'll be nine damage. You got to roll it. You got, you got a crit, oh. so. Oh, yeah. Is it a times two or no, okay. times three? I think it's, it's just times I think two. It's two. Okay. So. Um, so Not, you double that would your be, dice damage and then you add your right. bonus. So that would be uh, two dice is nine, um, 13 damage. Okay. Then. So she yelps out in pain, which is how you know she, it's a she, because it's clearly a feminine voice. And she just had an arrow shot through her freaking yeah. leg. So. Um, and she like kind of stumbles a little bit. Um, looks like she's going to fall off the ledge for a second. Um, and then she kind of catches herself. So we'll just go ahead and put. <laughs> she wrote better than a one? She did. <laughs> Guys, we're dealing with the to be fair, if Sir got shot in the foot or the leg, he'd probably scream like a girl too. <laughs> um, so then yeah. she does an arcane gesture. Um, and what you see is um, she vanishes in a puff of smoke. Um, and then she appears on the other side of the street. Um, Some sort of and she of mist. moves up over the, um, over the peak of the roof and then down the other side and disappears from view. Um, Baziago, it is your turn. The window. <laughs> and then everyone left. <laughs> Why? Uh, so I'll I'll go out to the I saw them run out so I'll, I'll go yeah. out in there yeah and then um, in game terms for the roof it yeah. is half movement you're fine okay um, full movement you have to make a dexterity saving throw okay um, you can't see Cirque anymore <laughs> yeah. you can't see Cirque and um, there's a blood trail that's from one where she well was. there's a little pool where she where she was and then. On the other side, if you got a good enough perception, you probably see the blood on the other side. Um, can I make an acrobatics check to dash along the rooftop? You certainly can. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay. 
Oh, yeah. I don't even have to use my luck powers for that. That's a 20. <laughs> I forgot. This is going to be no challenge for, for your luck powers. Um, okay, so you run along the roof, yeah. rooftop. Um, you just see Zerk on the ground. <laughs> so as described before, yeah. the jump from one section to the other is uh, 15 feet. And then to get to the, uh, the far side, it's 20 feet jump. It is a difficult jump. Not for me. <laughs> there's a there's a second there. Yeah. Just doing a little stretch. Yeah. As he's running along and up. stretch. <laughs> well no, because I imagine he got to the jump, right? Because I, I did the like, I did the oh. run. Which by the way, Vizaga's version of acrobatics I imagine is just like him drunkly stumbling, but yeah. he's done it enough times where like that's comfortable. Are you Captain Jack Sparrowing this? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what so would a god of luck look like, I ask oh, you? So that's, as that you're, is pretty much the yeah. so <laughs> As you're coming up to the, the corner, uh, a cart, a carriage yeah. comes yeah. along. Yeah. And why don't you go ahead and make your, your jump check, if that's what you're planning on doing. Yeah, absolutely. Acrobatics as well, right? Yeah. Okay. That's good, but not as good as I would like. <laughs> yeah, parkour. Now remember, this is the same night, so yeah. whatever you use for your rerolls. Yeah, oh, I used I already used a point, so you're right. So I'm up to so two. So we're now. still level four. No, you're five. Oh, we're five. Okay. I just didn't want to yeah. waste time leveling you guys. Oh, okay. <sighs> well, you tried. Yeah, well, I tried. You landed uh, on the cart. Maybe it'll take you in the right direction. So that's only a ten. Okay, so you do land on the carriage. <laughs> and you take no damage, and um. <laughs> <laughs> the guy, to... the guy notices yeah. you land and is like, "What?" I I saw that she went to the other side of that, yeah. right? So I'm gonna lean over and I'm gonna flip out a gold piece and I go, "We're going that way now." <laughs> He's like, "Okay, sir." <laughs> uh, all right, so um, shipwreck. So I hear him say, "We're going that way now." So uh -huh. I know which way to go around the buildings. Yeah. So I have a speed of forty now. Okay. So eighty Jeez. feet. Okay. All right. Around. Do I manage to get around the building? Yeah, you can get around the building. The building, and um, you. Why don't you make a perception check? All right. Ten. Okay. No. <laughs> no being anywhere to be seen. Foxar. I lost her. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I am going to casually just run down the edge of the roof. Jump okay. right over the alleyway onto the next roof okay. and keep giving chase. Okay. Now, is this the 15 foot side or the 20 foot side? Are you jumping across the street? Oh, yeah. I'm jumping, jumping across okay. the street. All right. Following exactly where I saw her reappear. Okay. Um, and that should be a fairly. Oh, that's oh, only a 16 oh. uh -oh. for acrobatics. 16 is. So you can jump what, how far? I can't remember. I think it's just part of your move. But I don't know what the DC is to jump 20 feet. That seems like a difficult. I don't want to say anything because I've ingrained Pathfinder's jumping rules so much oh, into my yeah. head that I don't like. I know what I'm about to say is probably Pathfinder not in fifth ed. Sorry, I apologize. I didn't have jump, yeah. the jump rules down. Jump. Um, is the DC not listed on? Oh, maybe uh, it is on that somewhere. Uh, long jump. Have. Okay, so to move, uh, move 10 plus feet. Um, and jump a number of uh, feet up to your strength score. That's I remember something weird like that. Yeah. So I mean, could jump twenty feet. Jump twelve feet. So eight. Eight. Okay. So you also land on the carriage. Okay. Um, and it it begins to go in the direction that Vizago uh, mentioned. Um, okay. So. Um, you can only jump up to your strength score. Really. Yeah. Yeah, it's an athletics check now. It's no. That's for a long yeah. jump. For a long um, jump. For a high jump, it's different. Yeah. It's, yeah. So. Um, yeah, you probably have a crazy vertical. I have yeah, fast climb and double. Oh, I have double jump distance. Okay, sixteen feet. Yeah. Sixteen feet is your. Still didn't make so, it. So yeah, you, you <laughs> now you have landed on the far side of the carriage, yeah. and, and you, you actually have to like grab on to, to avoid going over. Second story work. So. Um, yeah, second story work is awesome. Yeah. Like you don't have to... You Fast climb and double jump distance. Yeah. Okay. So... Um, but apparently it doesn't matter. Ship, ship, <laughs> uh, wait. Zago. Yes. So the carriage starts going. It makes a turn down the aisle that you recommended. Yeah. Zerg's way down there. Um, 
I you saw a circ run past you, yeah. um, and he's now looking up. So you go yeah. there. Um, why don't you make a perception check? Uh, before I do, I'm actually going to do something else too. So from my coat, I'm kind of going to sneak out my uh, my cane. That's definitely just a cane, nothing else. Yeah. Uh, that's got the skull just, on top. Yeah, just a cane. And I'm going to pop it up, and I'm going to close my eyes and activate the uh, periscope top to it to try and get myself a better view of the All rooftops. All right. So make a perception check. Um, that is, uh, 24. 24 is what you needed. So 24 sees that, um, it appears as though the rooftop is empty. But what you can see with your keen tiefling eyes is that some of the, um, What are the, the rooftop shingles? The shingles yeah. are a little wonky, mm. um, and it appears that what she has done is crouch down with her um, her cloak and just covered herself, um, hiding on the rooftop. Awesome. And how far away is this from where we're at the street? So you are now at the corner of the other um, building, and so it is. 10 feet off the ground, so mm -hmm. and you're on a carriage. So yeah. you could basically just step off of the carriage onto the rooftop. OK. Um, that, which, by the way, it's I like look, and then I'm just, with, before opening my eyes, I'm just going to step onto the roof. OK. And then I open it up, uh, and she's probably like, how yeah, far from me? Yeah, probably 20 feet. 20 feet? Yeah. Um, and uh, all right, I'm sorry. There is a reason for, for a moment pause. And, so uh, what was it? It was what was the type of action that you used to activate your? It, it's curve? just a free. I think I don't think it's a uh, okay. like a move action, or action or anything. Or I'll double check that I real quick. I should know though. because I'm the one that. Yeah, wrote, it's like it's like activating a magic item. Is a <coughs> standard action. Yeah, it's just while holding the sword cane, the wielder. I mean, cane, uh, can uh, <laughs> use it as a periscope <laughs> okay. to see barely over. All right, cool. Of course, that's fine. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll be like, <laughs> you really gave. Uh, Give us a run. Those uh, those wheels are really tired out, and she can make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, a, a wisdom saving throw, yeah. you say. Uh, that is 11. That does not make it. Okay. So uh, she's affected by uh, hideous laughter. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 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 who's, got, who's making the face? Tired out, so she just goes up and... <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, every time. Her stealth is blown. Got him. And um, that would be my turn, because okay. I took an action. All right. Uh, <laughs> sir, what are you doing? Uh, you well, hear Zago say a terrible joke, and then... It's a great joke. <laughs> so I'm going to climb up on top of the roof, okay. roof I guess? Uh, easy I'll... climb check. Okay. So, yeah, that's a 27. Okay. Oh, yeah, you climb it just fine. Okay, so I can... I'm just gonna you walk. see him standing fairly close to her. Um, she is in a, bo uh, a ball trying to stay on the roof, um, but laughing. Okay. I'm gonna go introduce myself. Okay. <laughs> and how are you gonna do that? By just um, grabbing a hold of her? Yeah. Lifting her off the, the rooftop? Basically like a chokehold. Okay. I figured it was gonna be like a Sally. Remember what I said I'd kill you last? <laughs> I lied. And then pile driver off the roof. Whoa, <laughs> no, geez, we took a step forward. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can grab her no problem. Okay. Um, just she's it. incapacitated. Yeah. yeah. So. I'll just pick her up and like, why are you spying on us? Uh, okay. Uh, Foxfire, are you going to get on the roof? Mm-hmm. Easy for you to do. Yep. Just step onto the roof. <laughs> Uh, you step on just as the carriage continues to go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, as like, the carriage keeps going, I go, goodbye, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so then when we get to her turn, she says, um, uh, Windstrider sent me to see what you were up to. Windstrider? Who's Windstrider? <laughs> uh, she says, God, you guys really don't know anything, do you? Uh, Mara Windstrider, the pirate lord who you're staying in's estate, or a, ta a tavern? 
Oh, oh, God. the fair wind. I, that wind strider. strider. I thought you meant like a cousin. I <laughs> sure has no idea who that is, but it's like, oh, she owns a place. Yeah. I set, and she's pirate lord. I yeah. set down her yeah. menu. <laughs> she's like, thanks, and she pulls the rest of the 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 arrow out of her ankle. Oh, yes. sorry about that. And that I'm gonna like owe your hurt. boss some gold for a window. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> whatever. They owe us some gold. I paid two gold a night for privacy, and we're getting spied on. She says, "Help me back to uh, the Fairwind, and, and we can discuss." Oh, we're gonna discuss terms. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I don't want to discuss terms out in the open. Is there a she cart says. coming by anytime soon? <laughs> Um, why don't you fall off the roof again? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that'd be ridiculous. If that I just seems fell to off summon roof. carts. <laughs> it's a minor ability. Uh, <laughs> card summoning. You card summoning. must fall off of a like, height greater than 10 feet. Just and 50 50 shot. Yeah, you know. A ray of card summoning. That's yeah. Yeah. Carriage <laughs> yeah. for you, Sam. Yes. Um, hmm. Okay, so how are you getting her off the roof? She's throw, hamstrung. Just throw her over your shoulders. Well, yeah, I'll yeah, just, just carry her. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to need you to make an athletics check uh, with disadvantage. She only use one hand. Hey, um, before... You got this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it was a 19 uh -huh. or a natural 20. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, you, you got this. You got this. So yeah. why don't you roll your D8 and mm -hmm. tell me what you get. Okay. Yeah. So, there were 19 or... It would have been a 19 or a 31. Okay, so let's plus your D8. So, 26. Okay. All right. Or 38. Yeah. That's it's a no, big swing. It's no problem. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Cirque's got monkey feet, so he just grabs on his feet and his hands and just... Well, yeah, he, he lived in the jungle for yeah, a while. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to do that two more times today, so, you know, until I take a 10-minute breather. So, as you get back to <laughs> like um, the Fairwind and your rooms at the Fairwind... Mm -hmm. um, Sarsarel has mended the window, um, <laughs> and Xenos has a uh, drink in his hand, and he's like, I got this from the, there's a refrigerator over here, an ice box. Uh, you're paying for that, too. <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure your name is on the rental agreement. Uh, you're right. I drink from your fridge, too. You're right. Vahago's name <laughs> is on the rental agreement. <laughs> <laughs> and as we all know, he always pays his debt. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's, there's there was an inn in Paldir <laughs> that had your name. That's true. I that, think you owe. I think you owe that inn in Paldir some money. No, that I that's a job. I'm for pretty them. sure that debt has been wiped clean. <laughs> yeah, we'll with the inn. <laughs> it was an um, the island. It was a fire else. sale, you know. Oh, <laughs> too so, soon. <laughs> so you get into the um, you get into the suite. Um, and she sits down, and um, uh, Sarsarel heals her injury so that she's not bleeding all over your suite. Um, nice. And uh, why we can't have nice she things. says, what do you guys want to know? Why are you spying on us? Uh, Windstrider sent me. Is it common practice to spy on people that rent rooms? Uh, it is common practice to uh, look into newcomers. Yeah, no, I've never been here before. Yeah, well, Have I mean, you? No. I'm going to sense motive on that. Okay. Uh, <coughs> or it's not sense motive, it's insight. It's insight. That's insight. what it not, is. You're not sensing Every time. anybody's motives. Untrained. I'm not going to waste a point on that. Five. You you think, well, clearly she wouldn't have recognized you with yeah. a clever disguise. I have a goatee on. <laughs> uh, you think yes. that she knows exactly who you guys are, and that's why she was sent. Well, we are of. I mean, we might be terrible pirates, but at least she's heard of us. That's true. Yeah. She says, uh, Fairwind, or, uh, yeah, Windstrider knows exactly who you guys are. And what? And, like, half the goatee falls <laughs> off. <laughs> that you've been here before. Um, and that's what's interesting to her, is, uh, you're Vizago? I mean, some may call me that. <laughs> Everybody calls you that. Um, <laughs> she says, uh, I think, I think it's safe to say that you've made enemies in Emmerich's hold. Yeah, I don't know why he's so mad. That stuff isn't even really his. What are they talking about? 
This is your friend stole some stuff off of Volgrim the Mighty. Stole. What? What kind of things? Uh, that, that, <laughs> and that. So she points out the magic first, items on his person. First off, this armor. Who knows if that is his? Second off, this clearly belongs to the merfolk, which I'm working on a deal to give it back to him. <laughs> this isn't even his. His name's not even on it. So she says, yeah. Apparently they had a deal um, with someone else. Um, there's varying degrees of truth about what's going on over there. But um, Windstrider doesn't really have a whole lot of love for Fulgrim. Well, that's, so. that's good, because I'm pretty sure you don't spell Fulgrim with Sir Dalaran. I don't even know who the fuck that is. It's his <laughs> sword. <laughs> um, different... So she, Aaron, she says, previous game. She says, so we were interested to, uh, the, the captain was interested to see what your guys' interests were being back here. Um, so what, it, what are you guys doing here? We're fixing our ship. Okay. I'm currently involved in a brawl for Oh, you're doing very well. Um, Finding out what happened to our island. Getting drunk. What's your what what island are you from? Paldir. Okay. And you've heard what happened to Paldir? Yes. Okay. A red dragon killed your island. Yep. Okay. Um, and you? Long I'm ears. Obviously not doing my job. Okay. Obviously. And what is your job? Uh, I was. I've been searching the city to see if anyone. Got word of uh, the Tempest Temptress being here. I mean, obviously the ship's in port, but um, anybody that was looking for uh, information as to why we were here, I've obviously failed at <laughs> finding those people ahead of time. Says, well, I mean, you're forgiven for finding for failing to find me. Uh, this is my town, and uh, Captain Fairwind is my captain. Oh, hang on. What is your name? Oh. My name? My name's Shelby. Hi. <laughs> yeah. I work for Captain Fairwind. Mm. Uh, she says, uh, and you, have you guys heard about the Red Wizards looking for you as well? Yeah. Yeah, there That's are That's not connected people. to Volgrim. I don't know what, I couldn't figure out why that was. Speaking of Volgrim, and he kind of takes the glass he's been playing with and sits down, he's like, there may be other reasons while we're here. Okay. And what is that? Save him. Oh, yeah. Uh, your friend. Your yeah. elf friend. Yeah. Yeah, Volgrim has Other him. Other elf friend. I know many. Volgrim has him. Still in his estate? No. He's moved him to um, the dungeons below um, Imerk's keep. So Fairwind doesn't like Volgrim, huh? Uh, well, they're both pirate lords, and they don't see eye to eye on a few things, but um, she believes that um, the devil she knows is better than the devil she doesn't, so uh, she's willing to tolerate him, but um, she was interested to see where your allegiance is. <coughs> I'd be interesting in meeting Fairwind. We can make that happen. Yeah. She sounds nice. Yeah. Also, She's not the one currently trying to kill me. I was going to say, she big, hasn't tried to kill us. Which She's is only tried to spy on us. So big that's... bonus in my book. Yeah. Really. Yeah. So what... We have an awesome story What's Thaven's so. interest to you guys? I don't know who that is. He's a friend. Okay. All right. Yeah. Do we rescue this friend? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> do you, do you okay. tell her anything else? Uh, I, I tell her no. He's a friend of mine. Uh, we were working the job together, and he got caught. And I, I tend to try and help. Friends. She, she asks, "How did you get Nickus involved in this?" <laughs> Who involved? Nickus Gearguts. Oh, well, you know, he built the vault. Yeah, yeah. That's that's. Concerning that he's mm -hmm. giving secrets about building the vault. 
I'm very persuasive. Okay. <laughs> You're not going to say that Volgrim stiffed him? Also, you know, Volgrim's not nice to many people, including people who do things for him. Yeah, we're so familiar with Volgrim. It helps when you're persuasive. <laughs> okay. Um, she says, well, uh, you're in luck. He's still in Imrik's hold. Oh, I thought he would have fled down long ago by now. No, he, he sought um, sanctuary with one of the other pirate lords. Hmm. Which one? Uh... Uh, let's see here. He is. Let's see. Maybe I put it over here. Uh, he is sought refuge with uh, the pirate lord Gastaban, um, and because he is in his estate, uh, Volcrum basically can't touch him. The pirate lords are all on equal yeah. footing. An act against them would be an act of war. Tantamount to an act of war, and the other pirate lords would unite against them. Hmm. So should we make it look like Volgrim is going after? I don't know. I would like to meet with your captain and discuss certain plans about that. Okay. All right. Um. I mean, Volgrim's had a good run. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> She says, we can discuss that. Uh, sounds like you guys have got your plate full with the, the uh, red wizards and with the, um, the fight club, the brawl for it all. Yeah. So um, with that, yeah. if you'll let me, I'm going to go ahead and. That's fine. Uh, next time, just knock. And I push <laughs> out the door. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, after that, uh, Zago will sit everyone down and be like, so I've been keeping it under wraps because uh, I just didn't know whether Thaven was alive or not. But there's some things I should tell. And I'll tell you the whole story about he was the one I escaped jail with. I did this job with him. He got captured. I'm trying to free him. Okay. Just a mon stealing montage the... past that. Yeah. And Craig's um, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you <laughs> Craig was there. tell him, uh, tell them about other Facts that you know about Thaven's past? I don't tell them that part. Okay. And but about who you were Thaven. meeting up with in Paldir? Thaven, sure. Thaven asked you. Yeah. Specifics. Uh, for meeting up with, who was it again? I'm sorry, it was a while Bafo. ago. Bafum. The coward. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. You'd have to explain the whole thing. I'd have to explain the whole thing to bring that up. Yeah. I probably wouldn't just because I think Vsago's still loyal enough to Thaven not to okay. air his laundry quite okay. yet. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, so you explain the, yeah. the things. Does anybody have anything else that they want to do before the end of the night? No? Oh, I guess that would bring up an interesting conversation, which is I'm going to turn to you and I go, don't even think about it, by the way. Um, I know you... People want the. Uh, you're from Cormier, right? Oh yeah. Oh, that's yeah, where I'm wanted. Just... <coughs> that's who brought me in. <laughs> yeah. I've heard I've heard stories of you. Well, he's now worked for pirates, but, so I don't yeah, think he's gonna yeah. be welcomed back. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not with open arms, anyway. Yeah. So, just uh, just to hear that. No. Yeah. Well. Probably Thanks, not. but do you happen to have a wanted poster up there? Uh, sure, Eric, I'm just, starting collection. Just so you know, why yeah. don't you make a history check for me? So <laughs> history check. Intelligence, if you're uh, unproficient. Oh, I've got one proficient okay. in it. Right. Oh, that's really five. Okay, five. so you wouldn't have known that uh, a Vizago, like tiefling um, was captured on, on the Hellish Wind. Now, was it the Hellish Wind or another ship? It was the Hellish Wind. Okay. Yeah. You wouldn't know that it was Because they escaped him, on the other but ship. It, yeah, I, that's what I thought, yeah. but I always... I would, that's a little bit murky. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> but you would know that a teeth, uh, a single teeth playing boy. He was uh, younger, but yeah, still the older. Like fifteen-ish. Yeah. Um, was captured on the hellish wind and taken, pri uh, basically prisoner. I'm sure it's a little like, taboo because the whole point was they went to capture a full crew 
of the wanted tiefling pirates. And when they got there, there was one 15-year-old with a ship that went, you just missed him. Yeah. <laughs> so he was locked in a hole. Yeah. Um, so For a few years. For a few. So anything else before we wipe to the next day? Mm, I think we're good. Okay. So we wipe to the next day. Um, you guys have some time um, to to do what you want to do before um, the the fight starts. The fights start at dusk. Um, so you guys have time to do anything that... Yeah, search going to see if you can go find a potion. Okay. Just as a backup plan. So <coughs> there is a potion shop in Emmerich's Hall. It's called uh, Potent Potables. Um, and... <laughs> I'll take S words for 500. <laughs> um, God damn it. And uh, there is a half elf there that is uh, just opening up for the day when you arrive. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Jeez. Hello? Hi. How can I help you? Um, I need a potion that makes you bigger. Bigger. Okay. We've got that. How much money do you have to spend? How much is a potion? Um, I could let this go for 300 gold pieces. Two, I'm sort of trying to remember how this bargaining thing works. 400 gold pieces. <laughs> it's, it's, like a, it's an auction. <laughs> uh, let's see. That's persuasion, right? Yeah, it'd be persuasion yeah. to negotiate at a cheaper price. 14. So, 275. Okay. I can let that, <laughs> right. that So she hands you over the, the potion. Um, and. Uh, Sirk has no idea whether or not this is legal for him to even have a potion in the fight. Uh, a pen is mightier. I mean, no one, was using, <laughs> no one was using weapons, but yeah. as far as you know, they could have no. been using. They could have. They're not taking blood tests before the fight. So. That's true. Could be doping. Could be doping. <laughs> None of my fighters dope. This is <laughs> unheard of. And then, <laughs> he's he like, got big naturally. It's all natural. It's like, big come back again if you need anything. Okay. All right. Off you go. Uh, Vizago would like to spend the time learning more about his opponent and seeing whether there's any known information on him. Okay. So why don't you make an investigation check? Because we know about stone... Stone Cold? Yeah, Stone Cold, mm -hmm. but I have two opponents today, right? Uh, so this is for Stone Cold, so this is a 13 investigation. His weak knees. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... But his legs are his best feature. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he does wear two leg braces. Okay. Um, he wears a pair of jean shorts to wrestle in, uh, and black boots. Yeah. And a vest. Yeah. Black vest with a skull on the back. Yeah. We're going nice. into real IP territory nice. here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so he is a dwarf. He is known as <laughs> kind of a, like a that. brawler. Uh -huh. um, mm. He doesn't do a lot of grappling. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Um, and then I'm going to check the leaderboards to see what the next fight would be for him. Uh, well, there's possible two. Okay. Um, and I'll right. give you them both. Um, there is... Um, uh, a person named Lorne, and then a person named Greta. Mm. Lorne or Greta? Greta Ratcatcher. Okay, I'm going to do an investigation check on the two of them and see if I can kind of okay. piece together what I know. Uh, no. Um, that's, uh, that's a 10. Okay. Um, you so there's not a whole lot of information that you glean. Lorne is a human. Um, he won his fight fairly handily. Mm -hmm. um, Greta is a halfling. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So that's what I'll be doing. Eric, uh, what's Fox doing? Um, today? I went off in search of an armory to replace some of them arrows that have been oh sure gone from my goods. Sure. So <laughs> I was missing about. I think eight of them. So I'm off looking for that, and okay. uh, <clears throat> and then kind of wandering through the wandering through the different taverns and stuff, listening for listening for more news from outside okay. Emmerich's hold. So um, the blacksmith in town is a dwarf by the name of Durkin Firebrand. Um, and is there anybody else? Because elves, dwarves, you know, I kind of. 
He's he's the best. All right. Everybody tells you to go to Durkin. Um, so he is a stout, um, fiery red bearded uh, dwarf. Um, he's got several um, apprentices in his place of business, um, and he has a number of uh, wares. Um, if you tell him that you need um, arrows, he he can make the arrowheads and have them fletched for you and chopped. Okay. Um, and did you want to talk to him, or are you looking for someone else? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll talk to him while I'm at it, just asking him. Um, before you start talking to him, why don't you um, make a perception check for me real quick? Seven. Okay. It's good that we're getting these out before. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the the name of his shop is Firebrand's Mystical Armory, and it lo- the sign looks very nice. It's all wrought iron, which he appears to have made himself. I'm impressed. Yeah. So if you'd like to make either a persuasion check or uh, investigation to glean something uh, of use from Durkin. Investigation. Ooh, that's an 11. Okay. Um, so with that, um, how are you going to, are you just going to strike up casual conversation while you're <coughs> waiting for? Yeah, well, once I, uh, once we work out the deal for the arrows and I, as I'm handing him coins, I just, so what news have you of uh, outside okay. Emmerich's hold? Uh, outside Emmerich's hold or inside Emmerich's hold? What are you looking for? I guess I should get news from inside Emmerich's hold. Okay. So, um, roll a d8 for me and I'll tell you what he knows. Eight. Eight. Okay. Um, so he tells you, um, that, uh, Mara Fairwind has called a meeting of the Pirate Lords to discuss something important. Um, but there appears to be some animosity from Volgrom and Gastaban that has delayed the meeting. Um, and then he asks, uh, what ship you came in on? And this is where the 11 and the information is. You get the sense that to get the information, you have to give him something in return. So. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I mean, you can try to lie. Yeah, I'm you not can, very you can good the at it. You name of the ship that we captured. Oh, yeah. Uh, the well, ivory hold? Yeah. Technically a lie. That is technically a lie. It is totally <laughs> a lie. <laughs> that is the As very a master de- liar, I don't think that. That is so. the very That's definition pretty, of it. Depends on if he was on the ship <laughs> when, when it came into when port. When it came into port. <laughs> yeah. Then it's technically uh, true. What do you say? Uh... Ivory Hold? I was a crew member of the Ivory Hold. Okay. Uh, why don't you go ahead and make a deception check for me real quick. Uh, ooh, I, I'm actually... Oh. Seven. Again. Okay. This is interesting. <laughs> I thought that that got towed in by the Tempest Temptress. Well, you see, there was this thing, and it broke down. Mm. Rudder chains. You know, rudder chains are prone to snapping. So we uh, Great. had to be towed in. Here's your arrows. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to continue the conversation, he's well, he seems willing to, but he's, he's not asking anymore. Yeah, I think I've kind of wasted my uh, breath with him, and okay. I'm going to walk out of okay. the shop with my arrows. Do you want to go around and see anything else while you're tucking the day? Tucking my elven tail. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you know, it's probably not a bad idea. Sure, you get time. Um, but I have no idea where I'm going to go. We're going to wander around. Um, you know, I'm going to go down towards the docks. Okay. To see if I can try to drum up some, any, any information from any other ships that are coming in. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you go down to the docks. Uh, the harbor master is kind of directing traffic, um, getting porters, uh, to carry stuff off of the ships. Uh, you could talk to, there are a number of, Sailors who are disembarking from ships, you could talk to the harbor master, one of the sailors, uh, one of the porters. And, and I'm going to be looking for people from uh, from the Maelstrom, from Vol- Volgrim's ship, oh, okay. to see if I can just try to get any, glean any information from them. Sure. Yeah. Um, the Maelstrom is probably the biggest ship you've seen because it has a fire giant captain, so it has to be big. Um, did you ever play Black Flag? 
Yes. Okay. So you remember the the the, the super secret treasure ships that would kill you in the one, legendary one salvo? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's that big. It is uh, enormous. Um, and there are a number of pirates that are kind of doing you know everyday maintenance on it that you can call one over if you want to. Um, so what do you say? I uh, well, so guy comes by and I'm like, hey, mm -hmm. that your ship? Yeah. What's this deal with uh, with your boss and holding up some meetings? I'm gonna be really blunt and just okay. go straight. I've heard heard rumors through the taverns that there's a okay. secret meeting, um, and your boss seems to be holding things up. Uh, well, okay, so make an insight check before you do that. Seven. Seven. You get the sense that a bribe would go um, a great distance to get the information you know, uh, or that this guy knows. Um, you have no idea what the bribe amount would be to, to do it. So um, so if you want to like, hand him a pouch of coin, um, you, you may get advantage on your persuasion check or not. I, I pull out a little leather thong uh -huh. and I give it a little shake. Okay. To let him hear that there is a significant amount of coins okay. in the bag. How much coins are you handing over? Well, I'm not handing anything over yet. Okay, well, you're going to make the pers this persuasion check, and if you hand it over, you're, you're persuading... Uh, oh, okay, I see what you're... Okay, so why don't you go ahead and... Okay, I'll give you this choice. You can try to hand over some coin. Um, without it, you're just going to go with a straight role of per, uh, persuasion. With it, you get advantage. Okay. Um, if you don't give him enough, you're not going to get disadvantage or anything. You're just going to get a straight roll. Okay. So how much, how much are you willing to hand over? <clears throat> I'm going to hand over, let's see if it costs two. I'm going to hand him 15 gold. 15 gold. Okay. So go ahead and make your roll with advantage. Oh, thank God. Uh, okay. Is that... Or we'll go with the 16. Okay, 16 total? Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, you, he pulls you off to the side. Um, he takes your, your uh, 15 gold, and he says, apparently the beef between Volgram and Gastabon is that Gastabon has something that Volgram wants. Um, and what could that be? And so they've never been particularly friendly, but they've always got along. And at this point, they're at a kind of an impasse. I ask him if he knows what it is that. Um, I will. Um, I'm going to roll percentiles. And is high good for you or bad for you? There's oh. a 20% chance that he knows. High is always good for me. <laughs> okay. Uh, he does not. Okay. Yeah. So. So yeah. So is there anything else? No, I thank him for his time. All right. Thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. And he goes back to scraping the boat. <laughs> <laughs> scraping barnacles off of the side of the ship. Uh, okay, so did you, uh, Mike, did you want to do anything else before you fight again? I don't think Cirque would want to do anything else because um, getting in a fight now would probably not be great. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> um, what about uh, Vizago? Is there anything he wants to do before the fight? I mean, you know, uh, it'd be a shame if he didn't get at least one or two dice games in. <clears throat> okay, so you're going to gamble? Yeah. Okay, let me flip over. I actually, for something else, I did just uh, do the gambling notes. Um, <laughs> huh. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know why I, I would have had to look that up, but um, <coughs> yeah. So Excuse let me, me just find them real quick. Session one. Hmm. Um, okay. I think Shirk's gonna get ready by uh, like okay. standing under so, a shower. Okay, so this will be um, <laughs> coming out wet. So the way the way the gambling works in the Xanathar's Guide to Everything uh -huh. is you make a series of. Um, Three checks, uh, and this is basically your result over the course of a day. Now, okay. you can bet um, between 
10 and 1,000 gold pieces. Um, and depending on your result, um, you either lose all your money, um, you can uh, double your bet, or you can, you know, yeah. mix of the mix of all of that. Um, so basically, how this is going to work is um, your DC is going to be five plus two D ten. Okay. And I'm going to not tell you that because yeah. that would be stupid. Uh, okay. Okay. So I have the DC. Okay. Um, you can either make. Um, Insight, charisma, or decept, uh, uh, or intimidation. Now you've got your dice games, mm -hmm. so you you have advantage. Yep. On these checks. Um, now, when are you proficient with gambling? Uh, I'm proficient with gam with a gambling kit. I don't know. So okay. yeah, I would. That would be. Yeah. So you can either use wisdom or charisma. Okay. To make your checks, and you add your proficiency bonus. Now, if you've got anything that gives you a bonus on yeah. top of that, you can use charisma mm -hmm. or deception or, or yeah. intimidation. So, um, and you're making three three rolls against my DC. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do deception. Okay. And then I'm have the dice. So I'm gonna be doing it with advantage. Sure. How much gold are you betting? To oh, I'm betting we... 50 gold. 50 gold, okay. Yeah. For how okay. much did we get? We got 1,000 gold last week? Yeah. I don't know. I'm essentially betting I won 50 gold last last session by betting on you. Mm. So I'm betting the money I won. It's, it's a gambler's trick. Um, so that's uh, 21 for the okay. first check. All right. Second check. I'll take the nine instead. Uh, so that would be an 18. Okay. So that's two rolls. This is the last one. Ooh, that's pretty good. Yeah, we'll take that one. 20. Yeah, uh, 26 for the last one. Okay, so you win all three. So over oh, wow. the course of the day, you double your your bet. So you Sweet. So got, I gain 100. Yeah, you've got 100 gold pieces. Uh, yeah, you got 100 gold pieces. Okay, cool. And then, um, yeah, so you get a lot of angry people. <laughs> yeah, angry people. They don't, I don't know. know. He's using loaded dice. They yeah. Know. Um, so For that once. is the course of yeah. several hours yeah. that you're uh, that you're doing that. So at that point, you're getting kind of close to the point where you, yeah, you guys are going to meet all up together. So um, all right, so let's go back to um, <coughs> the fair win. And um, you're greeted by Mean Sting. And he says... What's up, Mean Sting? He says, oh, good, just in time for your promo. Um, so he is going to... I uh, what? <laughs> uh, well, he says, well, I mean, you, you kind of got to win over the crowd as well. I mean, it's not all just fighting at the fair win. So... Yeah. Um, <laughs> he looks at you and he's like... Is this your manager? Yeah. yeah of course it's my manager. This is my fight. I'm sorry, what was your name again? My name? Oh, it's it's a hold. <laughs> okay. All right. I cannot. Yeah. Um, How did you do that? <laughs> all right, so uh he rows you guys out to yeah. the thing. Um and he um hold on, I'm I'm switching. There we go. Um so he rows you up, and uh, you get uh, each of you climb out onto the platform. And um, this will be his opponent. Nah. Stone Cold. Stone Cold. Stone Cold. Uh, Stone Burgess, Cold. Bulgus Brewforge. Um, so he's already out there because uh, he was introduced first, mm. and he gave a promo about how he was going to um, Stomp a mud hole in you and oh, then walk it dry. And walk it dry. <laughs> walk it dry. You'd hope he would run it dry because that means he'd be quick. But yeah, he's but walk no, it. no. He's gonna get you in that corner and he's yeah. just gonna pound you until you're flat. Um, so uh, now it's your turn. Okay. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I bring to you a fighter without equal. 
a fighter who will crush any opponent. And if you don't believe so, ask the water how good it tastes today because every fighter he tests will be able to tell you the taste. <laughs> <laughs> this is an unstoppable machine. This is an unstoppable force. This is the mysterious stranger. And where is he from? From nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> so I need you to make a persuasion roll for me real Absolutely. Quick. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and use yeah. a luck on that. When he that. does the whole water thing, I spray water out. Oh, oh, of course. For no reason at all. Dad. And behind my back, thermaturgy to make lights appear as he oh, sprays nice. the water so nice. it looks cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a big difference. Much okay. better. <laughs> uh, so that one is going to be a natural 27. Natural 27. Okay, so it just Roll looks great. great. Yeah. The water comes down. Yeah. It makes... Cirque's not doesn't have hair, but yeah. it makes Cirque's hair look so wet. And so good. wet. Uh, and then, uh, and then uh, Mean Sting says, uh, "All right, Stone Cold versus the Mysterious Stranger from nowhere." And then he brought you guys back. Yeah. To <laughs> He's like, "Let's get out of here." Let's get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna roll initiative because yep. it's just the you two. Oh, also on on our way out, I gave you like, "Hey, you got this." You All got right. This. Um, okay, so, um... Whoa. Um, so, uh, did you beat a, did, did you beat a two? <laughs> yeah, I got okay, a 16. So you get to go first against Stone Cold Brewforge. All right, how, let's see, one, two, three, four. So he's four squares away? Oh, okay, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and rage. Okay. And then, uh, step back off the off the edge and then just bolt at him. Are you gonna try to spear him? Yeah. All right. Right off the right off the bat. Yeah. If you hit him in your uh, Roman Reigns, that just ends the match, right? Yeah. Now. Well, if I can knock him back. Is a bull rush, right? You could. It's back five feet. Oh, it's only five feet. It's only five feet. Ah, oh, so well, it only hit the. No, yeah. pin him against the wall. All right. So, but I can't just make a full attack as part of my. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So I me mean, run towards him. Yeah. And you can hit him like. For effect, it's a spear, yeah. and then you can just can just pummel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So for the first hit, uh, is a twenty-five. Twenty-five oh. is gonna be fine to hit him. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't need to roll that d4. All right. So second hit, seventeen. Uh, seventeen will also hit. All right. And then offhand is twenty-three. Okay. So first hit. Uh, 12 damage. Okay. Second hit is 13 damage. Okay, so you're up to 25. Third hit is 7 damage. Okay, so that's 32. Yep. All right. You rattle him. That's a good <laughs> opening salvo. Um, what you see is he... Uh, he... You, basically, your, your three hits... Uh, you slam him in the stomach and then just start pounding him. Um, he pushes you away and he gets his fists back up. Um, and in doing so, he looks uh, a little bit more resolved, we'll say, is how, how he looks. And then he comes after you with two, two swings. So okay. uh, first attack is a natural 20, so that's going to oh, hit. Yeah. Uh, second attack is a 19. Yes. So first attack is going to be considerable amount of damage. Yes. <laughs> uh, 13 plus 10 is 23, 27 damage. Wow. For the first hit. And then the second hit wow. is um, 11. And these are not magical, so you're, you're bludgeoning. So you get you get, you get your half damage. So and then he begins to circle around you and just like yeah. do a couple jabs. Are considered magical. Yeah, he's not a barbarian, so it doesn't matter for him. All right. So as you, I'm gonna. Yeah, he's I'm, a pugilist. Oh. Okay. 
So I'm gonna kick him a couple times in the leg and then okay. uh, like right in the knees. <laughs> right okay. in his bad knees. You're trying to you're trying to <laughs> put him down. Yeah. And okay. then so kick him twice in the knees and then come down on his okay. face as he hits the ground. If he takes a knee. So yeah, that's uh, How many times are you gonna kick him in the knee? Twice. Twice, okay. So that's the main attack, sure. Sure. That. Okay. So that's a twenty seven. That's gonna hit just fine. Oh, natural one. Okay. On the second hit. So All right. Before you do the third attack, make a strength check with disadvantage. So just strength this is, check. Yeah, because I'm because well, I have... with disadvantage. I'm giving you the free maneuver oh, okay. as a as a knockdown because of your flavored tactics. Okay. So. And also remember, you have a D8. Yeah, I'm gonna use, use that. Yeah. Okay. So 15. Okay, so Actually, the I first think, hit. I don't know if I can um, use that. The first hit does crumple his knee, and oh, okay. he, um, he, you basically see it kind of give out um, <coughs> on him. And your second attack, the reason it doesn't do damage is it's just enough to sweep him down to the ground. So, okay. what was your damage on the first attack? On the first hit? hit was ten. Okay. And then the offhand, which is just the so kick, kick, and then and then you have advantage on this attack. Oh, okay. Because you knocked him down. 27 or 27? So 27 hits. <laughs> Just fine. Uh, eight damage. Okay. Um, he takes the eight. Okay, so what you see is he just comes uh, up with an uppercut. Like, as he's standing up, yeah. he, he comes up with an uppercut. That is a natural one, so that is not going to hit. So you dodge out of the way of that one. And then another natural one. Oh, wow, <laughs> man. So he doesn't hit you, but what he does do is he braces up again. So uh, pugilists have an ability called brace up, and that gives him 10 temporary hit points every time he Oh, does. wow. So just a little insight into him, he can make three attacks, or he can do two attacks and a brace up. So Wow. Um, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, somebody said that they didn't take a lot of damage last time, so I was like, oh, well, didn't take a lot of damage, huh? Okay. Uh, I've taken 18 so far. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so it's your turn. All right. Yeah, with that reducing damage by half. So that's yeah. one hit, <laughs> two hits, and I'm going to do a knee shot and then straight to the face. Okay. So. Does a 15 hit him? Uh, 15 is what you need. It's exactly okay. what you need. First hit is 12 damage. Okay. Second hit, 12 damage. Third hit, 8 damage. Okay. So that's... 32. 32? Yeah. Okay. He is hurting. Um, you should stay down. He's going to try a different tactic. <laughs> um, so the first attack, he's he thinks that basically if the, if he doesn't get you at this point, he's going to have a problem. So he is going to go for um, that is an eighteen. Yeah. Hit? Okay. So he grabs a hold of your waist. Okay. And then he basically oh. <laughs> he basically. Um, Let's the knee that you've buckled go free, and you guys both fall to oh. the ground. Um, and he ends oh. up on top of you. So the next two attacks that he's going to make are going to be with advantage. Uh, that is, I don't need to roll, but let me see if I crit. I don't crit. Um, two night. I rolled two 19s, and then, yeah, the lower of the two was less. Okay, so these attacks are going to be... Crit is fun, though. Uh, 14 for the first hit, and um, 12 for the second hit. Uh, so he's just on top of you, just <coughs> swinging away. Um, what do you do? Um, so I just need to break this grapple. He's or grappling. I can just punch him back. Yeah, you I'm can. I'm going to headbutt him three okay. times. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> so first headbutt. Uh, 29 to hit him. 29 hits. Just fine. Uh, 29 again. Okay. <laughs> hey, 
hey, natural 20 on the third one. <laughs> oh. Okay. So that's the weak one. Yeah. But it's still 3d4. Yeah. All right. Oh. Plus the knuckles. Yeah, okay. The knuckles. <laughs> so first one's 12. Second attack is 10. Third attack is 18. Okay. So. And he needs to make a strength save. He doesn't need to make a strength save because he's, he's, he's now unconscious. He is unconscious. Um, <laughs> so the first two attacks, you see, he's just like headbutt, knocked back. Still awake, headbutt, <laughs> knocked back. Third attack, you hear this just crunch <laughs> as his nose just gets spread oh. all the way across his face and his eyes roll back in his head. Man, and he's got some color. He <laughs> falls to the ground and. Um, I will have you make an insight check with disadvantage because you're raging. Oh, that's that's low. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's also low. Okay. So what'd you get? Seven. Uh, <laughs> you don't realize that he's starting to. Uh, he's laying on his back. He's starting to bleed into his. Uh, he's starting to choke. Yeah, um, and. I mean, Sting is, is doing the thing that he does, rowing the boat out there, but it's going to take him several rounds. Um, you don't look so good, buddy. <laughs> so, um, does any? Why don't you guys make perception checks? Sure. <laughs> I don't see shit. Yeah, okay. neither do I. So let me do some death saving Did throws you? for one. Yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is not going to say. Not going to save. Oh, he saved. So, so uh, he gets out there. Um, at that point, uh, <laughs> Mean Singh gets out there and he's like, oh. And he um, <laughs> begins to basically resuscitate him. He doesn't have the ability to, uh, to heal him, but he can try to do a medicine check. So I'll roll his medicine check right now. Um, he gets enough to kind of stabilize him. But he's like making the X yeah. uh, thing and calling more people. Um, and it takes a little bit of time for the next fight to happen because things are getting cleared. That helps. It actually helps our next thing. <laughs> so what are you guys going to do between fights? Um, <laughs> use some hit dice. Okay. Yeah. You, have, you have an hour. Yeah. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll give you a song of rest on that too so you can add a D6 to your hit dice. Okay. okay. Um, so that's what you two are doing in the hour between... Um, What's Firefox? Or Fox, what's Fox Fire? Which I, I imagine, three <coughs> which I imagine is just you in a corner, like sitting like this, drinking water, and I'm just rubbing your shoulder, like, "You got this, kid. <laughs> You're gonna win this. Oh, you're gonna take it." Um, um, yeah. What do you do? Hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go circulate through the crowd. Um, so <clears throat> listening for reactions on that last fight. <laughs> they, there is some <laughs> some serious reaction. It's it's the difference between the fights that you've seen before and and the reaction to that fight is like a the difference to a regular wrestling match versus like a, a really good street fight match. Um, so like, did you you didn't watch any wrestling this weekend, did you? No. Okay. I heard that the uh, NXT main event was really good. So, yeah, people are buzzing about that. Um, and um, as you're making your way through, you do happen to see uh, that the Minotaur, uh, Fisthorn, is, um, is drinking over in a side corner. Um, and he has, you notice that his... Um, crewman, the crewman that you were talking to before is the one that's bringing him beers as he's as he's just kind of waiting for his next round of the tournament. So, um, and and make a um, make a insight check or a history check, whichever is better for him. That would be eleven for history. Okay, so you remember that this was the guy that was helping him out the other day. And maybe that's the reason that you singled that guy out at the dock, maybe subconsciously or consciously, whatever. Um, 
So, um, so yeah, you now know who who he hangs with at, at these fights. So, um, so that is um, that is round two, uh, round one of the tournament for tonight. Um, next round, you're all healed back up, right, Mike? Yep. Um, so, um, so Mean Sting is uh, is rowing you back out. Yeah. Um, are you gonna give him the inspiration? Oh yeah. Okay. I'm gonna give him this. Also, I I want to go out there for his promo and tell him like, oh, I need to be there. <laughs> he says, okay, let's, okay, we can. We and can the other fighter is out there, right? Yeah, the other fighter is out there. It's who a, ended up? It's a halfling. It's the halfling. Oh, it's Greta. Okay. Greta Ratcatcher. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she looks about two feet tall. Um, she is a small individual. Um, and. If you want to make an insight check, I'll tell you. 18. Okay. So you think Cirque's got this no problem. Yeah. Um, Which she, made it this far. She's tiny. Um, he probably all just gave up because he didn't want to hurt her. You're fine. But uh, you think she knows just the way that she's standing, um, just the way that she she refused to do a promo against you. She's... Uh, she, you think, basically, it would be like, oh, um, that looks like Ronda Rousey standing there. <laughs> like, you know for yeah. a fact that she knows how to fight. Yep. So, um, you know enough not to take her lightly. So, um, he, he rows you out there. Yeah. He says, Greta Ratcatcher from the City of Splendor, Waterdeep, versus... The mysterious stranger. And I'm going to start cutting a promo that I'm going to make it seem like I'm doing a normal promo. What I'm really doing is I'm doing it at her. Yeah. Um, You're going to try to frighten her? Yeah. Can she go ahead and make I a figured, wisdom save? I figured that that was <laughs> yeah. um, That is a 17. She can go ahead and re-roll that. Okay. <laughs> that is only a 10. Okay. So uh, I'm doing this thing where I'm like, and he's going to put you in a body bag. And what no one else notices is while I'm doing that, I'm going, Cirque is going to kill you. And it's kind of whispering into her ear. <laughs> okay. So for the next hour, she's frightened of Cirque. Okay. So <laughs> what, what I am going to do, because this is a, a fighting mm -hmm. tournament, is I'm not going to have her be unwilling to move closer that's, to the target. That's fine. But I will give her the disadvantage the while disadvantage. he's near her. Yeah. Well, yeah, on attack rolls. Yeah. That's why I wanted to do it inside the fighting pool, because sure. it kind of makes sense that she wouldn't jump yeah. out to We're swim. Yeah. Hell in a <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. And then on my way, I'm like, you got this, bud. <laughs> All right. That's All right. Really good. So, um, Mike, initiative. 20 total. Uh, yeah, you beat her. So, All right. Um, she... Her demeanor's changed a little bit, but you don't really know why. <laughs> yeah. um, and she's basically posted up against you, so. Okay. Uh, so she's just right next to me? No, she's oh. she's uh, a good distance away. Okay. I mean, so I'm going to do a slide tackle to start. Just okay. run and just slide and try to kick her out. Okay. Try to knock her off of her feet. Okay. And then if that works, just hit her a couple times before okay. I pop back up. So slide is uh, 24. 24 is going to hit. All right. Second, so t yeah, it's over that. And third is also over that. Okay. So, so slide tackle first. Does 13 damage. Okay. Um, she actually catches your, um, catches your foot <coughs> with her own. She kind of does like a leg block. Mm. Um, and she, in return, um, swings back at you. And that is a 23 versus your AC. Yep. Jeez. Um, <laughs> and she <laughs> does uh, a 7 plus 5 is 12 damage. Now, are you did you start reading? Oh, yeah. I figured you started. Yeah. It's okay. So, um, so she, so you didn't, you didn't tackle her. Yeah. Um, and now you're second to attack. So 11. Damage for the second attack. Okay. And then five for the third. Okay, so 16 total? Because she didn't take any damage from the first attack. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she has a, an ability called Counter Cross, 
which uh, <coughs> she can take a reaction to reduce the damage taken by 14 points, um, and if it reduces it to zero or lower, she can make a, a counter attack. Oh, wow. That's yeah. good. Jeez. Yeah. Which um, is, that means, yeah, if she does it every round, she blocks the first one every round. Maybe. I mean. Well, that I can't do over 14. Oh, okay. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> she can't. So, so yeah. for those of you uh, watching at home, uh, we're using the Pugilist and the Pugilist uh, classes in here tonight. I forgot to mention that at the start of it. Uh, really great product on the DMs Guild. You should check it out if you're interested in a uh, person who fights with just their bare fists. So um, so that is your round. Yep. So what she's going to do is attack you back. Um, and Unless I use the ring to hit her. So she, uh, the first attack is 23. Yep. Second attack is 25. Yep. Third attack is a 10. Not going to hit. Nope. Fourth attack is a 23. So she yep. swings. She just goes. Oh, oh. She, has, she has four attacks. Yeah, she yeah. jumps up in the air and just <coughs> wailing away at your face. You're you're actually kind of surprised at how high she gets. Before if any she... of these are offhand, she does not get her strength bonus. That's true, but not if she's a monster. Um, oh. <laughs> so she hacks. So, yeah. hacks. hacks. So the first attack is uh, sixteen. <laughs> okay. Second attack is also 16. Okay, so. And the last attack is 15. She's done more to me in one round than that last guy did yeah. the whole fight. Yeah. She's better than that last guy. She lost oh, yeah. to this round. That's so, true. Yeah. It's your turn. Well, so she's now going to block the first attack, most likely. Yeah, she can try to. So that's a uh, 21. Okay, that hits. That's gonna be higher than 21. 13, does it 13 hit? Uh, 13 does not All right. so it's two attacks hit. Yep. So 13 damage. Okay, she's gonna reduce that. And then 10. And then 10, so she takes the 10. She does not hit you. Okay. Um, all right, yeah, so, so that's her my turn. Next round is going to be to use she um she has the brace up ability as well uh, so she is going to use brace up so she's going to give herself some hit points so 10 attempts. temporary hit points she can negate one attack <coughs> and she then has three more no it's different uh we'll get to that um <laughs> so she kind of tough i was gonna say for like, a little that's, tiny that's nuts so she can make two <laughs> attacks when she braces up oh, okay so the first attack is at 27, oh wait, yep. no, 25. And second attack is gonna miss. All right, so that is only nine damage. So okay. four. Four. Yeah. Okay. And now it's your turn. So she's just swinging away. All right, so now I'm going to See if I can grab her and just bash her head into the side of the ring. Okay. So your first attack could just be a grapple. Yep. So that's his, uh, I get advantage on this. So, don't know. If, it's because it's an attack roll, right? Yep. Yeah. So 25? Yeah, you grab her just fine. Okay, and then I just bash her head in. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to say that the railing is a D8. D8? Okay. Still get that. So now I actually have to hit her head with the railing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to use my inspiration. Okay. Wherever my inspiration die went. Oh, I'm holding it. Because <laughs> it's a D8. Yeah. Uh, 16. 16 is going to hit. That's okay. exactly what you need. All right. So that one hits. And then I'm going to see if I can do it again. Okay. Uh, that's much higher and then third one also higher okay 11 11 damage uh for the first one okay yep she's gonna negate that but she basically can't do a reaction for that but she's gonna negate it okay and then 14 she takes the 14 
and then six. Uh, 20. 20. Okay. Okay. How are you looking? I'm still under half. You're, uh, you're, oh, or, or, yeah, you're over. I'm, I'm over half. Okay. Yeah. All right. I've got 40 hit points left. Okay. So she is going to uh, um, brace how's, up again. How's she looking? <laughs> um, is she bloody? No. No? No, she's not bloody. Um, so... Okay. Um, and she's going to make her two attacks against you. First attack is going to hit. Second attack is not going to hit. So... Uh, 22 damage. So wow. That's pretty good for one hit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Off of a, a halfling. I forgot to play battle music. Damn. <laughs> yeah. um, All right. Um, let's see. So now i got to try to grapple her again. And kay. this time I'm going to just beat her onto the ground if I can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, that's a 16. That hits. All right. So just <laughs> okay. So like a power slam. Yeah. Like a power bomb, but Repeatedly. you just keep her. Yeah. Just... So that's 20 to hit. Okay. Uh, 22. Oh, natural 20. Okay. The first one is 14. Okay. Second one is 12. Okay. Third one is twenty two, <laughs> and she needs to make a strength save. So, as forty six damage, twenty four, and then twenty two. Yeah. Okay. That is a lot of damage. Um, all right. She just got power slammed into the ring three times. And she needs to make a what saving throw? A strength saving throw, Six. DC 60. Okay. Oh, yeah, she makes that just. She's not prone. Okay. She can roll out of it. But <laughs> uh, what I'm going to say is with the slamming against her, she is not <coughs> able to use her brace up ability this the next round. Um, so she basically st stands back up and she's like gasping for breath. Come on! Breath. Um, but uh, she's going to start kicking at your, your legs. Uh -oh. She's going to do the same thing you did to Stone Cold. Um, so the first attack is going to be uh, 14, probably not going to hit. Nope. Second attack is definitely going to hit. Third attack, hit. Fourth attack, miss. Or third attack, miss. Did I? You did four attacks. Okay, I did four attacks. So that yeah. last one doesn't count. So two attacks hit, right? Yeah. Okay. So first one is 15. Okay. Second one is 13. So 20 damage. So 10. All right. No, uh, no 13. Four, 14. So seven. Yeah, seven. And, um, seven, and I'm going to have her make a strength saving throw. Uh, it's contested. So go ahead and um, roll. Twenty-seven. Okay, so your knee hurts, but you, it does not buckle. Okay, it's like, oh, ho, ho, ho. I'm uh, gonna, I need to talk to Stone Cold after. <laughs> Apologize for something. Yeah, uh, that's, that's just, this hurts. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna punch her a couple times. Okay. Uh, yeah, thirty-one to hit her. Sixteen. Yeah, sixteen hits. <laughs> okay. First one is 12. Okay. 11. 6. Okay, so you do 17. 17. Um, and she's going to reduce the first one. Yep, so 17 damage. Um, <coughs> and she's going to attack you back. Uh, she hits. She. 12, 17. 17? Yeah. Okay. Um. And then she's just going to try to, she's going to brace up, and then she's going to try to swing at you twice. That's a two on the die, so that's not going to hit. And a 14, it's not going to hit. Nope. So she misses. 
Ooh. All right. <laughs> this is getting close. It is. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab her again and do the same power slam. Okay. All right. I, like, uh, like the Hulk and yeah, okay. there you <laughs> go. Yeah, there you puny go. god. <laughs> so you grab a hold of her feet. puny halfling with the first attack. Yep. So that's uh, twenty-seven. Oh yeah, that yeah, hits just fine. All right. So for the first slam on the ground is eighteen to hit. Okay. Sixteen and twenty-two. Okay. So fourteen. Okay. Fifteen. And 11. Okay, so she goes slack. <laughs> and then do I hear? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she goes slack. Oh! And you, she's really good. So, and then I follow. <laughs> this was not intentional, but I completely forgot to use disadvantage. It's fine. <laughs> it only would have worked for the first one after she gets done. Oh, she okay. wires off. Oh, okay. After she gets beat. Yeah, after she gets, after she so, takes something. Uh, the crowd, or if her friend took something. The crowd goes crazy. Um, you guys are uh, hailed as heroes. Uh, drink is bought at this point because you guys have made it to the finals. I had 10 hit points left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you, you challenged me, man. You were like, oh, I didn't take hardly any damage. So I was like, oh, you're going to take some damage. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm Let me gonna... do some editing of this word doc, man. <laughs> what was her CR? Uh, it was a five, but n I mean, I didn't change it after I adjusted it. Okay, so that's a five. Uh -huh. So that's what a party of four, four. should uh -huh. be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A party of Cirque. Now, a party of Cirque. Now remember, when I showed you the picture of you and, uh, and uh, Fisthorn, because strangely enough, you made it to the finals. What are you all. crazy? I mean, what are the odds? Who would have thought? Yeah. I said, you better cheat. So yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's why I got a strength potion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's part of it. Anyway. Speaking of which, uh, just because I'm working on something, uh, Fistorn, what does he normally? Does he like normally look like that? Is that what he wears? Um, probably. Yeah, I mean he's a minotaur, so he he might wear uh, kind of like what Chewie uh, would wear, like a bandolier yeah. or something like that. Okay. Um, yeah. Maybe I could slip him a potion of shrink. <laughs> I am. <laughs> well, he is drinking, and he does have a guy bringing him drinks. He, I, you have a guy that's bringing him drinks. Why Absolutely. don't you slip something into mm -hmm. his drink to make him not feel so great? Yeah. Uh, also, I can do that. Uh, Are I you think proficient I'm try. with poison? No, but sleight of hand. They can make it, and I can just. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, but use it, touching poison, even just to open the vial. Yeah. Well, so the poisoned condition yeah. is disadvantage on attack rolls and, and ability checks. So, yeah, that's good. If you poisoned him, also if it's ingested, it's disadvantage on the saving throw. Yeah. Um, we just need to find a strong poison. Yeah. I also want to try and find a metal object to slip on his bandolier. Oh. 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 Mm -hmm. okay. Does he have a belt buckle? Oh yeah, he has a belt buckle. Yeah, oh, absolutely. that's made of metal. That yeah. works. Okay, so um, so we're a little crunched for time because we're down to uh, eight thirteen. So yeah. I was planning on doing another day's worth of, of stuff, but we'll just skip ahead. <laughs> yeah, um, it is the next day, the, the next oh, evening. Oh, um, the, there is it. Is, the crowd is packed in this one. Do you want to set him out? Oh yeah, sure. Um, <coughs> and um, do, and do, do. you are escorted out to the ring. Um, so uh, Mean Sting says, uh, Kunjar Fisthorn from the deck of the Maelstrom. And there's a huge <laughs> roar of bassy voices that goes out. Um, clearly, he's the heel, so all yeah. of the marks love him. Yeah, clearly. Um, <laughs> and then... He, are you? Oh, are you, yeah. There, okay. There's a lot of people in the crowd that just have fake horns. There is, and I'm going to attempt, because uh, he's a member of the Maelstrom, right? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, this is personal. So he gets up there and he goes, let me tell you a little something. I've told you much about the mysterious stranger and his <laughs> deeds. You've heard a lot, but let me tell you something about his opponent tonight. His opponent serves for a pirate... Lord, 
some would say. Oh, uh, there's, a, the, that, there's that oh. reaction. Of the <laughs> because what you don't understand is this is simply, this is simply a man. This minotaur seems great, but apparently a tiefling and a dwarf is a little too much for him to handle. <laughs> <laughs> you are playing your hand, my friend. Yeah, just a little bit. And I'll go, but there is no, yeah, there you go. <laughs> But there is no one who can stand up. And I'll be like, do the thing where you pump up a little bit. And then to I the power. Do this and then drink the potion. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll be like, that is not mysterious, stranger. You do pump up. Yeah. 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 I, I, I start to get bigger and then I start hitting my chest and I get bigger and bigger each time. Nice. nice. <clears throat> okay. So uh, make a uh, persuasion roll. Yeah. Oh, I'll actually keep that. Um, so that's gonna be 21. Okay, 21. So the crowd is at a fervor for yeah. this. Um, and uh, at this point, we've cut to uh, several minutes before you guys go out there. And uh, Foxfire, I want you to make me a stealth check. Hmm. Good gravy. <laughs> but you know, before <sighs> you went on this adventure, <laughs> before you went on this adventure, I probably was like, hey, Foxfire, mm. you got this. You got this. <laughs> We're going to add a D8 You to that are roll. the knight. Yeah. That's better. That would make it a 19. Okay, then. so with a 19, you can sneak so up to your two. good friend, um, so and you three. can <laughs> slip something into uh, Kunjar's <coughs> uh, drink. And this is a advantage on your sleight of hand check okay. to do it unnoticed. Oof, that's a good thing you got. Good thing you got the, the advantage. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. seventeen. Okay. Um, so you sneak it in without him noticing, and um, we'll say that it is a medium difficulty. So that is going to be a DC. Eh, we'll go sixteen. You guys. Uh, you guys are paying um, yeah. some significant gold for this. Yeah. 20 gold for a vial, a one-use vial of poison. I'll pay for it. Um, <laughs> and he... Um, so the fight, the, uh, the fight's about to start. And um, Mike, you look across, and why don't you make an insight check? On Kunjar Fist Horn. 10. 10. <laughs> so you, it doesn't look like this has worked. And you're mm. kind of like, I, I might be in trouble. <laughs> and then he burps, and it, <coughs> and a little vomit comes out, and oh. you're like, oh, I might have a chance at this. <laughs> um, so we're gonna I, roll initiative I might now. Stand a chance. Uh, so there is one more thing I was going to do. Oh, okay. When we're on the boat back out, sure. When we get about sixty feet. Okay. I'm gonna sleight of hand to exactly on the exactly sixty. Feet. Yeah. 60 feet. <laughs> uh, while we're while we're on the boat, I'm gonna make a sleight of hand check okay. to cast heat metal at third level okay. on his belt buckle. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll take that. That is a eighteen. Okay. Uh, You're able to cast it without anybody really. So I, like while well, I'm like, oh, I'm really excited for this fight here, and I'm gonna cast it on his belt buckle. Okay. At third level. So what? For our audience at home, because clearly I know. Yeah. I mean, I've read <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But what does heat metal do? Heat when? metal, it heats up his belt. Normally it's 2d8 fire damage, okay. but I'm casting at third level, so it's going to be 3d8 fire damage. Okay. Uh, and then for the duration of a minute on my turn, so I'll roll initiative too. That's why I want to do it now. Okay. Um, if I spark it, it does the 3d8. Okay. Um, so I'm going to roll for that first one, because it goes off and I task. That's why I waited until we were on the yeah. boat. Yeah, yeah. Six. Or you can try to pull his pants off. <laughs> yeah, I would say that he's gonna. He is. May he may not realize it on the first round. Yeah. But. He, but if it keeps happening, like if he keeps getting yeah, discomfort. Yeah, he's gonna use a, an yeah. entire action to yeah. take off the belt. Uh, so that's twelve fire damage. Okay, so he takes you. twelve fire damage before the fight even starts. Yeah. Um, Cheat. So. <laughs> Uh, Mike, I helped poison him. He yeah. set his belt on fire. So I got a 17. I already lost, and then he rolled worse the second time. So he, you, you start. Okay. 13 is where I'm at. So I guess I'm after him, or am I before him? Uh, yeah, you're, you're after Mike. Okay. Uh, but before 
Kunjar. Cool. Which it makes it work really yeah. well. He yeah. happens, uh, it happens, and then he yeah. uses that. So okay. yeah, I'm gonna charge him and try to grab his hair and just slam him down to the ring. Okay. So just run like I'm running right past him, and then just grab his head and just okay. pull him down. Uh, does a twenty hit him? Twenty hits him. Okay. So now on our way down. Yeah. Uh, Thirty to hit the ring. Okay. And then I'm gonna roll on top of him and hit him a couple okay. times. Okay. Uh, that's a thirty again. And higher. So okay. first one is the ring. That's only eleven damage. Okay. And then ten and six. So another sixteen. Yep. All right. Now I'm sitting on top of him. This could go bad. <laughs> okay. So he, um, so you're grappling him, right? Yeah. So he has to make a grapple check, an opposed grapple check to, to get off of you. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna. Your fire. I'm gonna spike. Five. Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. So that is. Okay. You know what? Dang it. Hang on. You forgot to add that you're big. Yeah. He takes nine more damage. I, it's an extra D4. Yeah. For right. being big. Because they don't just increase weapon sizes. Yeah. They just say you just get an extra D4 damage. Okay. So he is going like, to right. try to make <coughs> a, uh, a strength check. Yeah. His first is to try to break the grapple. Oh, I get advantage. He gets disadvantage. <laughs> um, so he does not break the grapple unless you got better than a ten, or didn't. Get I got better, better than a ten. Okay. So he does not break the grapple okay. um, because he is in the middle of this pinning yeah. scenario. He's not going to take his action to break yeah. the grapple. Uh, but what he is going to do is attack you. Um, headbutt. Yeah, he's going to do a headbutt <laughs> back yeah, at you. That, that hurts because he's got horns. Oh, yeah. That's, I don't know if you're aware. aware. Yeah. Um, so that is... It's slightly is bigger than it was before. So yeah. two, eight, two 18s on the dice. So oh, he yeah. is definitely going to hit you. Yeah, he is. Um, so the first is... Uh, 28 damage from a headbutt. Basically, he just... <laughs> his oh. hips go up. He actually doesn't lean back <laughs> because he's on the ground. His hips go up to get you away from it, and then you just... Bam! <laughs> and, oh, oh, oh. Um, oh, that's not pleasant. And then he uses his bonus action to use second wind. So he is looking a little bit better than he was before. He is not a pugilist. He is something else. He's a um, minotaur. <laughs> he's a minotaur with class levels. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, so now we're back to shipwreck. Um, I'm going to go for the kidneys. Okay. 20 to hit him. Uh, does a 17 hit him? Uh, 17 hits, yeah. All right. Oh, that natural one is not, that's not bueno. No. So, uh, so 11 damage for the first hit. Okay. 14 damage for the second hit. Okay, so, so 25. 25. Oh, yeah, 25. Uh, yep. You can go again. Get him! <laughs> it's only a seven. Okay. I rolled both. So he takes seven more damage, yeah. and at this point he's definitely taken it. Yeah. Um, he's like, so, oh, chasing. <laughs> so he is going to, as he's, he basically tries to stand up, push you, push you off while pulling it off. Yeah. So he's not going to be able to attack. Um, and that... I'm going to say, for the sake of cinematics, he is yeah. able to push you off. Yeah, I didn't try to maintain the grapple. Yeah. So he's and able to push you off. I don't want to be near the fire. Yeah. So <laughs> he pulls off his, um, his that, bandolier. As soon as I see he's getting warm, I'm like, whoosh. <laughs> and uh, there is, like, scorch marks uh, where he's, it's just kind of been, uh, it's kind of a loose bandolier, so it's yeah. just been scorching his chest area. Um, so now it's your turn. All right. And as soon as he... 
throws it off and throws it off. It's just gonna, and all of a sudden it stops glowing for a little <laughs> bit for some reason. <laughs> Does it start lighting the thing on fire? Nope, I turned it off. That's specifically why I oh, okay. dropped concentration after he took it off. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go for his knees. Okay. I'm gonna do all three shots to the knee. All three shots to the knee. Okay. So that's a hit. Hit. And a hit. Okay. Uh, so thirteen damage for the first hit. Okay. Twelve damage for the second hit. Okay. Uh, eight damage for the third hit. Okay. Um, okay. He's looking bad. Yeah. He's looking bad. Uh, all right, so he's going to try to attack you back. Yeah, he took a lot of fire damage. <laughs> he took a lot of fire damage. <laughs> um, so he's going to attack. The first attack is not going to hit. A three and an 18 is what I rolled on the Ooh. dice. Uh, second attack is gonna hit. Um, so that is it was in the twenties. If you're oh yeah. Uh, so that is eleven, fifteen total, right. and then he's gonna action surge to make two more attacks. Ooh. So the eighteen. Uh, yeah. Okay. Second one. He's only a, uh, an 11, so he hits you again. Okay. Uh, that is 10 plus 6, 20 damage. Okay. Um, all right, your turn. He's just swinging for the fences at this point. All right, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna hit him in the stomach for the first one and then uppercut Okay. for the second one and then hit, as he's up in the air, I'm gonna punch, his, punch him right in the throat with the offhand. Okay. So I tried to expose the windpipe and then punch it. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna use your uh, yeah that's inspiration. That's <laughs> uh, so twenty that's gonna hit. Twenty's gonna hit. Yeah. By the way, that is the moment all bards wait for is for someone to say, "I'm going to use your inspiration." <laughs> oh, thank you. Finally. Oh, good. Good. My class is useful. <laughs> My defining feature. That's a hit on the the uppercut. Throat shot is a 22 to hit. So, okay. So three hits. So 11 damage for the first hit. Okay. 13 damage for the uppercut. Okay. And 10 damage for the throat shot. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. So um, you uppercut. He's. What? What? What was it? So is it punch in the stomach? Punch in the stomach. So, so he, he leans, leans over. over oh. Uppercut. Oh. And then as he's right there, just smack. Okay, so you, he is right. reeling on his feet. At this point, he has zero hit points. Um, and for cinematic nature, uh, <laughs> that's how you're gonna finish him? Yeah, I just poke you're him in the forehead. You're gonna poke a doom in. <laughs> right. And then he just tumbles backwards. And the crowd just roars. <laughs> um, Aaron, you're... 50 gold, because yeah. you, you, you didn't actually see <coughs> down in the beginning. Yeah. Your 50 gold is uh, converted to 200 gold uh, for your winnings. Um, uh, shipwreck, um, not only do you get a belt that is so... That doesn't light on fire. <laughs> so the the yeah. belt that... that uh, uh, Mara Fairwind brings out to the ring is the size of a stone giant's dinner plate is the is the metal on the front. So it Jesus. takes up from mid thigh to like mid abdomen. <laughs> that is um, what we call a tower sheet. And yes. then it is um, it is black leather on the sides. Um, it's got plates for the champion. Uh, on the sides, and she says, "To the mysterious stranger." I so Vizago will be because I imagine yeah, he went out yeah, there yeah, with yeah. it. But this is like, a celebration. Do you want to be famous? Yes. Okay, and I'll be all like, <clears throat> "The mysterious stranger had no past. <laughs> he had no name. But before you 
does not stand a stranger, no. Before you stands your champion, Sark of the Tempest Temptress. <laughs> oh, yeah. the crowd, the crowd erupts. Oh. So, <laughs> to give you an idea, so uh, Mara Fairwind, she is uh, dark, uh, dark hair, uh, very straight. She's probably mid twenties, which is kind of surprising that she's a pirate, pirate lord mid, there. Uh, yeah. yeah, pirate lord of mid twenties, um, and she has the biggest, most uh, outlandish pirate hat you've ever seen. Um, and she hands over the belt, Cirque of the Tempest Temptress. And with that, we're gonna stop for the night. So Yay! thanks Woo! everybody yeah. for joining us. Uh, thanks again thanks to everybody. Sirenscape and Axe and Shield and Dwarven Forge for all of the amazing help that you've given us. And um, we will see you next week. Uh, important show note before we end. Uh, Mike and Aaron are going to be out for next week, but we will be getting back uh, Xenos and Sarsarel. So it'll be an interesting dynamic to have <laughs> the two people that have not been playing in the last two weeks join us for uh, the next portion of this adventure. So thank you very much. Have a great night, and we'll see you next week.